Hello, everyone. Ian McMillan here from Fansided. Today, I'm joined by Greg Oden, former Ohio State Buckeye, former NBA player, and now the current director of base basketball operations with Butler. He's also partnered with AT&T. He's going to be in an ad with March Madness coming up. Excited to get into that, Greg. Thank you for joining me today. I want to start off uh, right now and talk about your experience in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you made uh, a run alongside Mike Conley back in 2007, all the way to the final, unfortunately fell short to Florida. Uh, what's your biggest memory when you think back to that team and the run that you guys went on? Well, my biggest memory is all of the Florida fans giving me the Gator chomp as I walked off the court losers. Um, but honestly, I, I remember that 2007 uh, Ohio State team as a team that was just came together um, we had fun with each other. We we're all friends and we all went out there and battled. And we were just this, I wouldn't say about three or four, three short of breaking down that back-to-back -back Florida team. But it was a good hard fought game. Um, I still love those guys to this day. Uh, still very close with them and love everything about Ohio State. How important is kind of that friendship between teammates obviously skill and talent is huge in making a run but kind of being like best friends with your team how important is that uh to survive through the entire ncaa tournament well i think you know the games back to back every week the schedule being around the guys as much as you are for a full year i mean you would want to be friends with those guys if you're going to be around them all that time um and i think when you're friends with the guys that you go out there on the floor with you're going to give it more you're going to give it your all. You're going to go out there to battle for these guys because these are guys that you care about and friends with. Now, you, uh, you've you joined Butler, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the director of basketball operations. Uh, what's going to happen if you guys end up playing some kind of out-of-conference game against Ohio State? Are you going to feel torn if that happens? Or, or are you gonna, it's going to be hard to cheer against your former backup Buckeyes? Well, I'm never going to feel torn because I got Ohio State tatted on my arm, but I got Butler paying my checks. So I am OK with that. Uh, but if we ever do get back to where they play that uh, that series again, I, I would love to go to battle against those guys. Um, I'm a Buckeye for life, but right now I'm a Bulldog. So I appreciate it. Yeah, let's talk about your Bulldogs. Obviously, a bit of a disappointing season. Uh, did not make the NCAA tournament. What does Butler need to do to get back to the NCAA tournament next year? We got to get better. I mean, as simple as that. You know, we we need we need some dogs on our team. We we just got to come together as a team, and hopefully, we can keep it together for the full season. I think we had some really good wins. We, we played some tough opponents. We played some really good teams, very tough, and, and kind of lost it there at the end. But we we need to pull together 40 minutes each game and guys who want to go out there and fight and scrap for it because the Big East is a very physical, very scrappy league. And um, we just need some guys who can hold up to that and, and, and bring the Bulldogs back to, to that level we want to get to. Yeah, let's talk about the Big East. Obviously, a very competitive conference this year. Five Big East teams will be competing in the in the NCAA tournament. What are your general thoughts? Obviously, you're you're quite familiar with the Big East now after being in it here for the past season. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts about the teams that did make it? Is there a team that you think is best suited for maybe a deep run out of the Big East in the NCAA tournament? What are your general thoughts about those five teams? Um, I, I think we got some guys that can, some teams that can actually make a long run. Uh, if you gave us some Big East refs, I think for sure we can beat up on some teams. But if you give us some West Coast refs that call ticky tack fouls, I don't know how we would stand up. Uh, as I said, the Big East is very physical. Um, but I, I think that gives us an advantage, especially in the tournament. Um, I'm really looking at uh, Marquette. And UConn, I, I think just what they bring and their versatilities um, can get them a long way against some good, talented teams and, and create some matchup problems that can possibly get them by. I love it. Now, obviously, this wouldn't be a pre-March Madness interview without uh, getting some picks from you, Greg. I need your final four. I got Arizona, Marquette. I got UCLA and Texas with a UCLA-Arizona game. 
And I kind of got Arizona winning that. Um, even yeah. though I am very high up on UCLA and Texas. Those before I actually looked at the bracket, those were my two picks to possibly win it was UCLA or Texas. I'm I'm very high on UCLA right now, but I think out of those four, I think Arizona just has too much firepower and, and can get it done. So for a guy who played in the Big Ten and is now part of the Big East, you got a pat an all Pac-12 NCAA tournament final between Arizona and UCLA. I do, I do. I I just I, I like I said, I'm high up on UCLA right now. I think they're playing well. I think they're very good defensively, and they got some some talent offensively. Um, and I just think Arizona just just has it all, to be honest with you. Those big guys and then the guards coming in, they're, they're just hitting you from all cylinders. And, um, I mean, as we all know, nobody has the perfect bracket. Nobody's going to get the perfect bracket. Well, I'm not going to wood right now. Hopefully I do. But uh, <laughs> this is very tough to do. It's all speculation right now. Um, but, you know, there's a bunch of teams that could possibly make it. I know I'm sorry I slept on Alabama. I'm just – I, I picked my bracket while I was at my daughter's uh, skate party yesterday at school before the games happened. So it was a quick pick, but that's what I ended up with. Love it. Uh, you got Marquette in the final four there, it sounds like. At least I do. Big East. I do. Um, yeah, I think it's like a one in like 10 billion chance to predict a perfect bracket, but every year I'm convinced I'm going to be the person to do it. Uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about uh, some NBA really quick. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to get your thoughts on Nikola Jokic because he is right now, if you look at the betting odds, the favorite to win MVP once again. Uh, so he might win MVP for the third straight time. I believe Larry Bird was the last person to do it. I, I know there's some speculation about whether or not, like, guys, if there's, like, a higher standard for you to win a third straight MVP. I'm curious about your general thoughts on that because some people think, hey, this guy's won it two years in a row, give it to someone else. Do you think each year should be evaluated individually for guys like Nikola Jokic? Or do you kind of have to raise your own bar every year if you're going to, you know, potentially win MVP for the third straight season? That one's kind of tough because uh, either way you look at it, there's a span of like five, six years that LeBron should have just got it every right. year. Right. You know, so if you're looking at it at that point, um, if you don't give LeBron – three in a row, how do you give it to anybody else three in a row? And I'm not hating on a big guy. I'm a Joker fan. Don't get me wrong. But I think right now, and as of last year, Joel Embiid has been killing it. His team is up there, and, and he's just to the point where he's dominant. I mean, then also in that LeBron talk, I mean, who can stop Giannis? Giannis just happened to have a, a right. really great team around him. Um but right now, I personally think it's Joel Embiid's uh, MVP to lose. Uh, Joker is there. Everything he does for his team, don't get me wrong, he is the most valuable player for that team. Um, I just think uh, what Embiid is doing is a little bit more this year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that MVP race uh, shakes up here in the final stretch of the season. Now, I got your final four picks. I knew to get, I do, do need to get your NBA finals picks as well because uh, I love the NBA this year. A lot of parity, a lot more parity than what we've seen in years past, in my opinion. A lot of different teams that can win it. Who do you have coming out of the East? Who do you have coming out of the West? I got a Philly Milwaukee Eastern Conference final with Milwaukee coming out of that. Um, and then I don't have a Western Conference, but I, I think the Suns is going to come out of that. And uh, to be fair, I am really scared of Golden State when they get healthy and mm. they hit their stride. I don't care who they go against. This is just what they do and how they play. And Steph and Clay and Draymond just holding up that defense and moving the ball. I think they're just tough to play anybody. And then with everything going on with Memphis, you know, I'm, I'm not sure they're ready just yet. So I got the Suns coming out of the West with all that firepower. But I think they need to get Durant out there and, and at least get some games where they can start gelling before the playoffs. But right now I'm leaning towards Milwaukee this year. If LeBron is healthy by the time the playoffs start and the Lakers are at least in the playing game, can they go on a run here with uh, a healthy Anthony Davis and LeBron James? 
anything is possible. <laughs> Brian James. <laughs> Love it. Uh, thank you, Greg. Now, talk to me about your partnership with at and I understand they're going to be in an ad uh, for the March Madness tournament coming up. Yeah, yeah. They reached out, and uh, I had a great opportunity to be in a commercial, which I had a blast doing and, and filming. Uh, good chance to meet uh, Lily. Um, she was awesome. Uh, also, Adam Morrison, Kristen Leitner, Sabrina Onescu. Um, it was some big, big time people there, and I was happy they just brought me along. Honestly, I was just smiling being in the background if I needed to be. Uh, very thankful to AT&T for allowing me to be in that commercial and just being a part of it to even think of me. Um, I'm very thankful for that and thankful for them. Perfect. Everyone should keep an eye out for that. I'm sure we'll all have multiple screens going during March Madness, so we might get you on our screen on a couple different screens at the same time in that AT&T commercial. So keep, keep an eye out for that. So. Thank you so much, Greg. I appreciate uh, your time. Take care and uh, best of luck to uh, the Bulldogs next season. Oh, thank you very much. And you have a good one.